We'll continue to use this one hexanol as we discuss how to analyze NMR spectra, or a plot of the NMR data. And this plot may not be entirely accurate. I didn't run my NMR for this, but what I did is I created one based on the general principles of NMR that I'll be teaching you. And this will be something that will enable you to now interpret any NMR spectrum data that you're now provided by using these simple steps. There are three steps in it, and each one of these steps tells you more information. So the first step is you look at the number of unique environments, and that will tell you the number of groups that show up on your NMR spectra. And so here we have one, two, three, four, five different groups, plus this one. But always be aware of this one that is located at zero, exactly zero ppm. This is occupied by tetramethylsilane, which is simply a marker that you use to calibrate your NMR spectra. And so tetramethylsilane is silicon with four methyl groups. It's structured like that. And you will always see this peak. Don't interpret that as a NMR group, but instead as the calibration using tetramethylsilane, which is a chemical used specifically for that purpose. Here, we've already identified that we have one, two, three, four, five groups. And these groups, one, two, three, four, and five, correspond with those unique proton environments. So the number of unique proton environments correlates with the number of peak groups on your NMR spectra. So step one is identifying how many proton environments you have and that will equal the number of groups of peaks that you see on your NMR spectra. The next step is to look at the area underneath the group, and that will be provided to you in a number of different ways. It might be provided like this, where you see a number listed on top of it that corresponds with the area. You might also see it listed as a plot like this with various steps where each step has a given height that will correspond with the number in that group. So essentially over here, we're starting at a level of zero. And then as we pass this group containing three, we take a step up that is equal to an area of three protons. Then here we'll take a step up that correlates with two. Here we'll take one that goes up that correlates with six and so on. And so you can see these steps, each step tells you the area of that. The third thing to be aware of with that, you can be, so the first one was that they can just give you a number here. The second one is they can give it to you in steps. The third thing is that these numbers may or may not correspond exactly with the number of protons in the environment, but instead they might correspond with the relative number of protons. So you could see an area of one and an area of three it could mean you have one proton in that environment or, and that you have three in this environment. It could also mean that you have two in this environment and six in that environment. It's a relative number rather than an absolute. But the area underneath these groups is directly related to the number of protons within that environment. And so this one has three or some number that is relative to three in it, whereas this one has fewer protons within its environment. So step one is that the number of unique environments tells you the number of different groups other than the TMS that you see on your NMR spectra. The second thing is that the area underneath these groups corresponds with the number of protons in that environment. And the third and final thing to be aware of is that notice that a lot of these groups are separated into different peaks. The number of sub-peaks or peaks within a group is equal to n plus 1, where n is the number of neighboring protons connected to that. And so this one, for example, since it has three peaks, and three peaks is equal to n plus one, that means that whichever protons represent this group, those protons have two hydrogens on their neighboring carbons or their neighbors of, of any type. 
I suppose the last thing to go through is that you never recognize neighbors through an oxygen or through a very electronegative atom. And so if you have an oxygen or something like that, even if the neighbor is oxygen, you might not recognize a proton attached to that oxygen because the oxygen is so electronegative that it cancels out the neighboring protons which produce a spin-spin splitting effect that causes these slight deviations which results in the peaks. And that's something that's a, a more advanced topic, but it is something that we'll be covering on the site, is spin-spin splitting caused by neighbors. Now let's go through our NMR plot and let's just assess it using these rules and see how we can interpret this in order to understand what this NMR spectra is telling us and whether or not it applies to this six hexanol that we're looking at. So the first thing is that the number of unique environments for protons tells you the number of groups that you see on your spectrum. So here we've already established we have one, two, three, four, five groups. Five groups of unique proton environments equals one, two, three, four, five groups of peaks on your NMR spectrum plot. The second thing is that the area underneath a group tells you the number of protons in that environment or sometimes it's a relative number of protons in that environment. So here we have a group that has six protons within that environment. That is going to be the one with the largest area and luckily on this plot we have an area that is exactly six so we know that that one corresponds to this group over here. So I'll just draw a little arrow. This set of peaks corresponds with that. Let's see, uh, other ones that will be useful are the ones with one and the ones with three. And so the one with one, usually that's a proton attached to some electronegative atom like oxygen. And so this is the H that's attached to our OH here. That corresponds not with the TMS, but with this group. So remember the TMS is only used as a marker and doesn't represent something exactly on your NMR spectrum. The group with three, that's another unique number, so that will correspond with this environment which contains three protons in it. So we'll connect there. And then we're stuck with a few other groups and our job is to try to figure out what conclusions we can draw. Both of these have an area underneath the group of two, meaning that these two are the two proton environments that have exactly two protons in them. So that corresponds with this and this. How do we distinguish these from each other? The main thing we can do is we can look at the number of sub-peaks. And so this one has three peaks which means it's an environment, the area tells us it's an environment that has two protons in it. And the three peaks tell us that it has two neighboring protons that it identifies because remember n plus one tells us how many peaks we get. So because we have three, n must be two and two is the number of neighboring protons there. So we're looking for a CH2 environment and why don't we just go through and calculate the ways that we can pair these two parts to their positions on the NMR plot. We know that the area of this one will be equal to two and the area of this one will also be equal to two because there are two protons in this environment and there are two protons in that environment. The other information we have is we can find out the, the number of peaks, let's just write that there. The number of peaks will be equal to n plus 1 where n is the number of neighbors. And so here we have three neighboring protons on that carbon and two neighboring protons on this one. So all in all we have five neighbors and so the number of peaks will be 5 plus 1. So six peaks in that group. Now for this one, the number of peaks will be equal to its number of neighbors plus one. So clearly on this neighboring carbon, we have two neighboring protons there. The question is, do we consider this hydrogen attached to the neighboring oxygen? 
And the answer is no. You never consider a neighbor when you're going through something highly electronegative like oxygen in order to see that neighbor. And so what we have here is something that has two neighbors up here and no neighbors down on the oxygen side. And so its total peaks will be equal to n plus 1. n is the number of neighbors, which is 2. So all in all, we'll have three peaks on that group. So if we're trying to assign these two groups, one will have three peaks and an area of two, and so that clearly corresponds with this group here. And the last one, I won't draw an arrow because that will be pretty cluttered, but it's something with an area of two and six peaks within this group. They might call it a multiplet. They might call this a triplet or a diplet or something like that. This will be a multiplet and it contains numerous peaks. It turns out that it's exactly six here. And so the area of two tells us that there are only two protons in that environment. The number of peaks tells us n plus one, where n is the number of neighbors. So when you're looking at any NMR plot and you have a compound given to you, the first thing is use the rules of chemically equivalent protons in order to calculate how many different proton environments you have. The next step then is to realize that the number of distinct environments equals the number of groups that you see on your plot, not including this tetramethylsilane calibration peak. So the number of environments tells you the number of groups that you have here overall. The area of these groups is either directly or relatively related to the number of protons within that environment. And so here we have something with six, and here we have an environment with only one. This will have six times as much area under its curve as this one will have under its curve. So we have a six to one ratio there. And here we have ones with two protons in that environment, which means that the area will be two, or at least it will be exactly one third of the area of this larger group. So step one is the number of unique environments tells you the number of groups. Step two is that the area under the groups corresponds with the relative number of protons within that particular environment. And the third step is to realize that these numbers of peaks within a group tell you a lot about how many neighbors that proton environment has. And so the number of peaks here will be n plus 1, where n is the number of protons that you recognize on a neighboring carbon. So here for this carbon, it has a neighbor with two and another neighbor with two. So we're looking at four neighbors for this carbon. And therefore the number of peaks will be five. It will be four plus one equals five. And that's true for all three of these, which is why they're all considered chemically equivalent. So when you see an NMR spectrum like this, look for the TMS and ignore that. That will usually be at zero ppm, parts per million. Look for the number of groups that tells you how many chemically equivalent environments you have. Look for the area under the peak, which tells you the number of protons within that environment. And then look for the sub-peaks, which will tell you a lot about what kind of neighbors are present that are neighboring the protons within that environment and thus creating a spin-spin splitting that causes multiple smaller peaks. And if you know those three rules, then analyzing NMR spectroscopy becomes a lot simpler and becomes an actually kind of enjoyable exercise because it's a lot of logical detective work and something that you'll become very, very proficient at. Mm -hmm.